I can see better from over here. Man, how you do that? I just did it. Well, show me how to do it. Alright, I'll show you how to do it. Let's get into it. Hello, and welcome to another tutorial from Abbott Studio Pro. Today we're doing this tutorial on how to make a ghost. Let's get into it. First thing you're going to need is you're going to need to record a clip. I'm going to pull this down into the timeline. The clip should include the subject doing whatever you want the subject to do. And then, like, getting up from the couch there. And then... You also need a clip, and I'm going to split this clip right here to get it ready. Right at the point where the subject stops doing whatever he's doing. And then you need another clip of the subject just sitting in the couch and doing whatever else you want the subject to do. But they have to match up, so make sure that you put your subject in the same exact spot. Use a tripod to make sure the camera doesn't move. And I made sure that the subject sat in the same spot in the couch both times. And also made his hands and arms the same way. Then you want to take the second clip and bring it underneath the first one because the first clip is actually the one that's going to be the ghost clip so for the clip that's going to be the ghost I'm going to double click it I'm going to go to Keyers and Studio Chroma Key only thing I want to do on here is change the transparency to whatever I want and this one I want it on 85 I'm going to hit enter and if I show the tracks below on here, you'll then see the subject actually getting out, the ghost walking out of the subject. You just need to make sure that you line up everything exactly how you want it, because right now it's not really at the right place. So make sure that once you get it like this, it actually makes it easier for you to line up everything how you want it. Because you can see when the ghost comes out and you can see how you, when and where you want the ghost to come out. So this would be a good one here because subjects just sitting there when the ghost comes out. So that's just about perfect. Now, since I got that part done, I'm going to go ahead and remove these. Because that's really the the biggest part to do. But I'm going to go back to a position where I have everything all set up. So you'll notice that on these two top clips, the chroma key effect is in there. But I also went ahead and I split the clip on the top and the bottom track in this position. And on the top one... I also added in a radio blur. I didn't make any changes to the settings on that. I added in blur. Didn't make any changes to the settings on that. And I added in a no light factory. Now what I did on this one. Is I actually used some keyframes. And if you go through here you'll see. There's a little burst of light in the middle of the screen. That I keyframe. And I kept it pretty low through all of these keyframes. Just gradually bringing up the brightness. Um on these and I also made sure that the position of the light was over my subject so I moved it to wherever I needed it to be and I used my vertical also moved it wherever I needed it to be and then I changed the brightness through these keyframes I left the source, the light source, at the same spot throughout the whole, all of the keyframes. The main thing that I changed was the light source. And you'll see that at the end, I made the light source really bright by 159. And then I made these keyframes close to each other so that it would quickly jump up to 300. And that makes it kind of burst out on the screen for you. On the clip below, I added the shine effect to this one. 
And that's the effect that you see that at the beginning where the light starts emanating from the middle of the subject. And I just use two keyframes on here really. On the first keyframe, once again I move the X and the Y positions where I needed them at so that the light came from the subject and you can't see it moving right now because another thing I did besides moving the light source where I needed to move it now let's do this first let me change my opacity back up so you can actually see how the light source changes when you move it so I want to put it to where I already knew I needed it to be and I made my ray length two on this first keyframe as well because I'm going to make the the boost light and the relay go up I made my boost light zero and I changed the transfer mode to add now for the first keyframe I had the opacity for the shine effect at zero and that way when I went to my last keyframe I can move the opacity up to 100 and I made my ray length five at that position and I left my boost light at zero. How about that? And that's it. All I did on the last clip on the top was added the blur effect to this one. As you can see. And just to let you know where these effects are at. You got your blur effect here under camera. You got your radio blur on the camera as well. On the effects for the red giant null effect. I use the uh the cool lens for this effect and on the shine effect the default I used was the HD shimmer electric just add in your sound effects that you choose put your fades where you need them and you're done. That's it. How to make a ghost in Avid Studio. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.